Hello everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another card video. You might remember that pattern paper from my live on Friday. I had adhered it to the card front and then ended up not using it. And I really wanted to use this pattern paper because it's so beautiful. It's from Vicki Booten's Color Study 6x8 paper pad. And then I thought I'd use the Hello dies from that same die set that I used in the video on Friday as well. This die set is from Concord and Ninth, and it has this, these really bold letters that say hello, and then it also has a shadow die that I'll be cutting out as well. I cut out the word out of watercolor paper. I'm using some Fabriano Artistico Extra White, and then I'm going to be painting it. This is a very, very simple video for today. Um, just a little bit time consuming because I did slow down quite a bit while I was painting this word. Um, I wanted to sort of mimic some of the lettering styles that I've seen, kind of give it a go, make it my own. And so this is that process. And I'm going to keep it in real time because I wanted to show you all how long it really does take to do something like this. I, um, I suspect that some of the frustration that some people get with lettering and um, designing uh, lettering pieces. Some of that frustration, I believe, comes from just working too fast and not slowing down and enjoying the process. So I wanted to show you guys in real time how long that takes. I first did a very pale layer of watercolor. This is a purple shade from my Magello Mission Gold palette. And I ended up doing two layers of this very pale purple because the first layer was a little bit too muted once it was dry. So I painted a second layer. And you may have noticed that I started painting this while it was still sort of puzzle pieced in the negative area from when I die cut it. And I thought maybe that would make it a little bit easier to paint, but in actuality, it was easier just to go ahead and just hold it down um, in very small sections and just paint away. So that's what I did. I did a layer of, or two layers of that pale purple paint and then used my heat tool to dry that. So now I'm going to use some metallic or pearlescent paints from Yuli Watercolors. And this first one is a nice bright purple shade. I've actually used it in a video in the past, I believe. And I'm going to be using a very, very tiny brush. I believe it's a size zero brush to paint the interior areas of these letters. I want to have that pale purple almost look like a border around the outside edge. And since this dark purple covers up that uh, pale purple just beautifully, it worked out well. I'm going around each section of the letters and I'm trying to make sure I have an even spacing for that pale purple border that I want to protect. So I'm slowing down and going very, very slowly. The thing that's really fun about doing lettering cells like this is that um, you could take something like this and apply it to anything. Um, you could put it on mail art. You could uh, use a very big, bold marker to write someone's name on an envelope and then paint over the top like this. I think that would look really amazing. It's a great opportunity to add embellishments and different design elements to um, like a big, bold word or a name like that. And um, using paints like this that are more opaque, so you could use gouache or use metallic or per pearlescent watercolors. Anything that's more opaque is great for this. Um, in fact, I almost considered using the uh, pigment deco brush markers from Karen. I had that in a video last week. Um, those markers are amazing for doing very opaque uh, line work. So I think that would look well for, uh, work well for this as well. But in this particular case, I wanted to try it out and use some metallic paints so I could get kind of a different finish on the letters. So after I had it initially painted, I went back and smoothed out some of those areas, um, refined the very thin edges that I left around that area, and just kind of tweaked it trying to smooth everything out and make it look as nice as possible. 
Now I'm gonna switch to a different color. I'm going to go to this uh, Christmas gold color. And this is my favorite gold of all the UV watercolors. Um, she actually sent me another one that's called Oscar. I'm gonna try that one soon too, but this um, very shimmery pearlescent gold is just beautiful. So notice that I started drawing these V shapes, which sort of look like hearts. I started that on the letter H and they look sort of blobby and messy at the beginning. That was because I really didn't have an idea of what I was doing. I probably should have practiced a bit before I went directly on this, but I didn't. So you're going to see me fix that here in a little bit. Like I mentioned before, these paints are opaque, so you can paint over things and kind of layer them. And so when you make a mistake like this, or it just looks a little messy, it doesn't look quite right for what you want, you do have that opportunity to paint over the top and start over again. So that's exactly what I did for that letter H. Um, I just wanted to clean up some of those areas and give myself a second shot at painting these. So I had a couple little areas. I just took that same dark purple paint and went over the gold. And it does put, give a little bit of a different texture on top, but I don't think anyone who uh, didn't know what happened would even know. I think it looks great and it's a great way to disguise a mistake. So after I have that painted and dried, then I came back with my gold color once again just gonna add a little dot up in that top corner. And then I'm going to start painting those V shapes. And this time I'm slowing down and spreading those out and I have a better idea of how it should look because I've already painted the rest of the bird. I hope this gives you some ideas on how you can spruce up and add different elements to large greetings like this. I think plain polka dots or pinstripes or diagonal stripes or squiggles or even painting very simple flowers on this would be phenomenal. I sort of want to do a bunch of those and just see how they turn out. So now I've cut out that shadow layer out of just white cardstock out of some Nina Classic Crest Solar White 110 pound cardstock. And I'm applying some foam tape on the back. And then I also applied foam tape in strips on the back of my painted greeting. I'm gonna remove the backing on those and uh, just adhere them together. I'm doing this before I adhere it on the final card. I'll press those together and then I'm going to take the entire piece and take the backing off that and apply it to my card front. So this is a very, very simple card in that it's just the one greeting and then pattern paper. Uh, this pattern paper works so well for a card like this because it is a masterpiece in and of itself. Just a reminder that the paper pack that I used, as well as the dies, uh, the paints, everything I've used today will be listed down below in the video description or in the supplies list at my blog. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I will be back very soon with another card video. And until then, uh, do something creative today. I challenge you to make something, uh, break out those supplies, make a card or two, and just have fun with it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.